Welcome to the hot sauce. This is Angel Planels, registered dietitian nutritionist in Seattle, Washington. I'm currently at 197 subscribers, and the goal is to make it to 250 by the end of the year. So please help a brother out and like, comment, and subscribe. You can also catch this, previous, and future episodes on your favorite podcasting platform. Let's get right into it. Today, we are going to feature Vanda Nesheth, a fellow registered dietitian nutritionist and former national media spokesperson. She resides in Rancho Palos Verdes, a city south of Los Angeles, California. Two, one. All right, well, welcome back to the hot sauce. Today, we have a good friend of mine. She was a former media spokesperson for the Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics. She is based in Los Angeles, California. We have Vanda Nesheth. Thank you for coming on. I'm going to go ahead and we are going to put you in the hot seat here. And then why don't you go ahead and give us an introduction into your journey into the profession, what inspired you to join, why you went to school, internship jobs, the floor is yours. Go for it. Thanks, Angel. I am excited to be here. It's always fun to chat with a friend, a colleague. Um, So I was born and raised in India. I came to LA 31 years ago. And I came here as a fiance and we had an Indian wedding here. My husband and I fell in love in India and I came here. We had a big Indian wedding and have lived here ever since. But my journey started in India. I grew up eating phenomenal food, plant-based food, vegetarian food cooked by my mom. She was so good about picking foods that were in season coming up with these creative recipes, actually no recipes. She just winged it, but she came up with these magical meals for us every single day from scratch. And I didn't really recognize how special that was because that's just what I was used to eating every day. Right. And as I was going through my schooling there, when I went to high school in India, you actually pick your majors for college in 11th grade, you decide what your major is. So I started out as a pre-med major wanting to be in that space. But at the end of 11th grade, I decided I really didn't want to be a physician. I love science. I love food. And I realized there's a whole other field called nutrition and dietetics. So in India, I switched my senior year of high school. I actually did nutrition and dietetics, did an undergrad in nutrition and dietetics. But I'm also a classical Indian dancer. And so I was torn. I really wanted to pursue dancing. I wanted to be a professional dancer. And that was my career focus. But my parents insisted that I finish an undergrad degree in something else as a fallback. They said, you need to have something else. You can continue to dance and maybe go back to that as a career if that's what you want. So I was not a happy camper as a teenager, but I did finish that degree. And to this day, I thank my parents because it's been such an amazing journey. So I started with that, fell in love with my husband, came here, went, tried to get into school here because I thought I'll go back to nutrition and dietetics and realized that my undergrad really didn't transfer here. Undergrad there is only three years and I had to redo an entire undergrad degree here. So it took me a year, two years almost to accept the fact that I had to do that all over again. But again, silver lining. I actually loved the general education classes. I loved U.S. history. I loved psychology. I loved all those classes. It made me integrate into life here better. I finished my undergrad degree at Cal State University, Los Angeles. And part of that, it was a CDP program. So it was a coordinated dietetics program. And so I was able to do all my internship right there through that program. And I sped through the whole thing. I did my internship as well as my undergrad degree in two and a half, three years because I was given credit, but I also was taking like 22 units a term. I was definitely motivated to finish it. Um, I did the typical, I did clinical rotation at a hospital. I did outpatient at a couple dialysis units. I did an outpatient at a VA. I think of you, Angel. I know you Uh have a strong association with the VA. Um, And I always knew that I wanted to be an entrepreneur. I wanted to be in business. But it's I felt like I needed a strong clinical background because I learned so much from being on the ICU floor or on covering different floors in a hospital. So that was an amazing experience. And along my schooling, I also had a job as a diet clerk at our local hospital. And that was really fascinating to me 
because I was learning about the types of foods people ate in this country. I was not used to all the different foods that came on the tray line when I would see it go by and I didn't even know these types of foods. So it was really good for me to start there and then eventually to graduate. And I was hired by the same hospital actually as their clinical dietitian. And it was a small community hospital and I covered all the floors. So you were the dietitian for the whole hospital for ICU, for med surge, for outpatient, everything. So again, great experience because I was able to really build my clinical skills and get support from colleagues, learn there. And then I got pregnant. And so I wanted to have a career where I could still see clients, but I also wanted to be home with my kids. We didn't have anyone from family who could stay home and watch our kids. And so I decided to go per diem where I would work just weekends, but it was just very challenging. And so I started working home health. And at that point with home health, it was telephonic consults way before telehealth. I would literally yeah. get a consult by fax. I would pick up the phone, talk to the family, give them diet education, or if it was tube feeding, I would calculate it, talk to the pharmacist, the nurse, and we would come up with the recommendations and they would go through. So that was kind of nice to have my foot in the door and continue to keep my skills up. It was very, very part-time because my husband was traveling almost um, every week. He had over 200, 250 hours of flight time. He was traveling all over for consulting for his role. So I was the home base for our kids. But as my kids grew up, by the time my younger one was in kindergarten, I felt the need and desire to go back to more of a career. So I went back to a hospital and I did a couple years of clinical dietetics. I was the dietitian for the hospital and clinical. And again, great experience. I was continuing to do the home health on the side. And I slowly decided I'm going to start a small private practice just for family and friends who wanted to see me. And that's how I started. I also worked in diabetes. I was the outpatient diabetes dietitian. That's how I got my hours and did the CDCES exam. And it is just as challenging, if not more challenging than the RD exam, <laughs> because you're answering questions from all the different parts of being a diabetes care and education specialist. So that was pretty cool to get that certification. Um, and so that's really been my journey. And then in 2005, six, my mom passed away in India, and that was sort of a, almost a moment for me where she was all about, you know, be the best you can be in whatever field you choose. And so I felt with all the education, the training I had, I needed to go for it. And that's why I really put my efforts into private practice and started my practice then part time and then went into becoming a spokesperson for the academy, which has been an amazing journey. And my practice has continued and I'm doing many more things with my career. Awesome. So that I know that's great. a long winded answer, but hopefully oh, that, was great. That, was awesome. that was awesome. Thank you. And, uh, and the fact that you had to essentially do the degree twice, you know, is pretty, uh, I think that's, you know, that's something that, you know, and your example of being a diet clerk and learning about the different foods, it's like, you know, some people may take some of these things for granted and then, you know, you're coming over, you have to be able to speak two languages. You have to, you know, so it's, it's great. No, it's awesome. Thank you for that. Um, so the next question for you, what, um, what do you find with your years of doing media to be the, like, what is the most humbling and what is the most um, enlightening aspect of, of doing media? What would you say? I would say it's, um, it's, an, it's an amazing privilege, really, because you get to impact so many lives. And ultimately, it's all about impact for me, because I just believe as dietitians, as people who are so passionate about what we do, helping people live their lives fully, for me, it's all about savoring food, living, you know, joyously, enjoying your cultural foods and also hitting your health and wellness targets. So if I can take that message in my private practice, maybe I can see 50, 100, maybe a thousand clients. But with the media interview, I can reach millions. And it's incredible. It's so humbling because um, 
one of the coolest experiences I remember. My dad still sends me old fashioned letters. He writes letters and sends them registered mail to me from India. And sometimes he will send me cutouts of the latest recipe or something in India. And so one time he sends me this article from a newspaper in India. And the coolest thing was it had my quote on it. And I had no idea it was picked up by a newspaper in India. So just the impact that you connect with people all over. And I see that because I have clients um, who reach out to me. I have a client in Australia, in New Zealand, in South Africa. These are people who could work with anyone, anywhere, but they choose to connect with you because you have conveyed a message that resonated with them. So it's definitely very humbling. Yeah. Awesome. No, thank you. And you're absolutely correct. It is kind of amazing when you see your name being shot in different languages and spreading around. You're like, okay, you know, here's a little one-off quote and it just travels around the world. Oh, it's, it's great. Yeah. So cool. Well, thank you for that. Um, so the next question for you, um, you know, if you could do it all over again, uh, what would you change and, and what would you keep the same? And I, and I, I, I say this, for, for everybody, There's, you can always cop out and say, I'm not changing a thing, or you could do whatever, whatever, you know, what, is there anything you would change? Or do you think like your, your journey has been great the way it is? What would you have to say? Yeah, you know, obviously, I wish I could have just come here and done a master's like right away. I didn't need the undergrad degree again. But as I mentioned to you, some the silver lining was I loved my GE classes, I would have missed out on those. So I think every step of the way in my journey, every experience has helped build me and shape my career and shape my way of working with clients with the media. And so I truly believe everything is lined up just the way it was meant to be. Um, yeah, I don't necessarily think I would change anything. Awesome. Okay. No, that's good to hear. Because I think what I would anticipate is some people with all the pitfalls along the way people quit and you know there's yes. an opportunity for you to come here and be like oh I gotta redo this again I'm gonna go do something else you know and so no, yeah that's a that's why I like to say dietitians are very perseverant there yes resilient and perseverant <laughs> yes <laughs> so, okay cool well thank you for that answer um so the next question for you is what does the future hold for you what would you say well, I believe I'm living my dream. I love what I get to do. I I wake up every morning feeling so grateful and thankful that I'm doing everything I want to do. Um, my kids are now young adults. Um, we have a beautiful relationship. So my personal, my family is my top priority. It's always been the top priority. So everyone is doing well, healthy. Professionally, I've always wanted to have wear many different hats. I like doing a variety of things. I don't see myself doing the exact same thing every single day. So I have a private practice where I see clients. I have coaching clients that I work with one-on-one -on -one very closely, like a concierge practice. I love presenting and speaking. So I'm always looking forward to more opportunities. I love working with brands and bringing that expertise to some of their messaging with brands that I align with. So looking forward to more of those opportunities. Um, traveling, love to travel. So hopefully I can connect all these together and do the traveling, speaking, media all combined. Um, yeah, I, I just love all the different aspects. Um, one thing I'm trying to do is start creating some online programs, other ways that people can work with me because there's only one me. And so I have just launched a brand new program that I'm super excited about. It is going into live stage on April 24th. It's for anyone who is brand new diagnosed with pre-diabetes or type 2 diabetes. And um, or if it's someone who has been living with this condition, but hasn't gotten the foundational pieces in place, because if you don't have those pieces in place, nothing you do is going to help you manage your blood sugars better. So it's a fully self-paced course. It has video trainings, worksheets, meal plan ideas, snack ideas, everything you would need to get you started. And so if you have notes, uh, Angel, show notes, I'm happy to do a special discount code 
Um, for any of your listeners, um, it'll be 20% off. We will provide that code to you and the link to that course. So happy to do that. Awesome. Awesome. Well, thank you for that. And I'm sure it's great. No, it's awesome. See, that's a, this is the cool thing about this is we're sharing the love and spreading the message. So thank you. Yes. So. All right. Well, I could, you know, I, I could chat with you all day long. I want to respect your time. You made it to the end of the questions. The final question for you is any words of wisdom for the next generation of dietitians? What would you have to say? Well, first, be open to learning, to opportunities, and take the time to really absorb all the information, knowledge, and apply it. One of the biggest challenges I have with uh, young students and interns is they want to do what I'm doing. I've been doing this for 25 years. So yes, you could easily start a private practice. I'm not saying you can't, but I just believe like having some of those other experiences make you a better dietitian, make you a better coach. So you can have that bigger impact on your clients' lives. And if that's what you want, you need to put the work in. You need to work with seasoned dietitians. Um, get into networking groups, learn from masterminds. There are so many opportunities. It's a phenomenal career. It's, it's amazing. But be open to learning and be open to putting some time and effort into every step that you do so that you can really learn and apply that knowledge. Awesome. Well, with that being said, thank you very much. I greatly appreciate your time. And I will end the recording. Great. Awesome. So you did good. Thank you, Angel. <laughs>